We're going to find out today that logs and exponents undo each other. Meaning if you have an equation, okay, so I want you to see this as a comparison. If you have an equation like this, 3x equals 36, you could probably just think in your head 3 times 12 gives you 36, right? Okay. On the other hand, let's say you had 3x equals 364082. Okay, then how would you solve that? You, you'd use a calculator, but what's the operation you would do? You would divide both sides by 3. Okay, because it's a multiply problem, you're using a divide to solve it. Okay, so I want to show you why we're introducing the topic of logarithms. Let's say I give you this. What is 3 to the first power? Okay, if I ask you this question, 3 to what power gives me 9? What would the x be? 2. 2. Okay, so x is 2. Let's say, five, let's say I want to do 2 to the what power gives me 32. What's x going to be? 5. 5. Okay, because 2 to the fifth gives you 32. So x would be 5. You can play around with it and figure that out. All right, now I want to solve. Let's figure out 3 to the x gives me 8. Silence, right? Okay, 3 to the first. What's 3 to the first? 3. What's 3 to the second? No. 9. Okay, so this is really interesting. Because I want to find 3 to the something gives me 8 and it's in between here. So it's got to be in between 1 and 2, right? If only there were a number in between 1 and 2. What's a number in between 1 and 2? A half. A half. 1 and a half. Okay, so let's try this. Let's try 3 to the 1.5 on your calculator. What do you get? Eva, read it to me. What do you get? 5.196152. Yeah, that's good enough. All right, see the idea? It's bigger than 3, it's smaller than 9, but it's not exactly 8, right? Okay? But it's closer, which is it closer to? Is it closer to the 3 or closer to the 9? It's closer to the 3. Okay, so my guess is I need a number bigger than 1.5. Hmm, is there a number between 1.5 and 2? Ooh, what would that be? 1.135. One, you just pulled that out of your head. Huh? Okay, he says, let's try 1.895. All right, let's try that. What is 3 to the 1.895? What'd you get, John? 8.019. 8.019. Ooh, he got really close, didn't he? Mm -hmm. All right. Now, here's the thing. We're never going to get exactly 8, okay? This is going to be one of those irrational numbers. We would need to raise 3 to an irrational number to get exactly 8, but we could get close if we did more decimal points, all right? And we would do it by practicing and playing with it. That's a really long way to do it. I want to have an a, ability to get the answer faster, and that's what logarithms are going to do for us. So I want you to say that word out loud so you know how to pronounce it. Logarithm. Logarithm. Okay, Aaron, you have a question? Do we start using decimals now instead of... Yes, exactly. We're going to start using decimals to approximate it. Some, sometimes logarithms will give us, we'll find out that a fraction would work, and then we've got an exact answer. If it doesn't, then we're going to approximate it using decimals, and we're going to round to four places. That's where we're heading in this lesson, okay? All right, so let's start your handout. The logarithmic definition. It assumes that your base is greater than zero, and that your base is not 1. Okay, now, here's the definition. y equals log base b of x. So let me just tell you right now, logs feel really strange the first time you see them. Every one of us that teaches math feels that way. I can't protect you from that strange first hour, all right? But this is why you're so glad you came today, and it will get better as you practice it. So I want you to write over here how to pronounce this. Y, how to read it? Y equals log base b of x. All right, now we're going to read this together. Ready? Here we go. Y equals log base b of x. All right, what it means is that if you took x, if you took b, and you raised it to the y power, you would get 
x. Okay, this feels so strange. So I want you to take the b on, on your log, and I want you to draw an arrow over to this b. All right? And the y, you're going to draw an arrow over to the exponent. Now, normally I would go over to the board. Can you swivel over and let me do that? Mm -hmm. Is that all right? Okay. Let me show you what we're going to be doing in this first section. When you're in second grade, they teach you something called four-fact families. They probably teach it now in kindergarten. Here's what it looks like. If I tell you that 2 plus 3 equals 5, tell me another addition fact that is also true using those same numbers. Use the commutative property. 3 plus 2 equals 5, okay? Give me a subtraction fact that uses those same numbers. 5 minus 2 equals 3. What's another subtraction fact that also works? Okay, do you see how you're using the same three numbers, the same pieces of information in a different way? If it's true that 2 plus 3 equals 5, then if I subtract either one of those from 5, I should get the other one. Okay, you probably don't remember this. I remember because my kids were in school and I helped out in their school. You wrote fact, fact families of multiplication and division, and they helped you understand how the two things worked. We're going to use fact families of and x. Okay, and at the top of your paper, I want you to write what's going to be your new math chant, and here it is. A law is an exponent. Okay, here's what that means. Finding a log, we're going to abbreviate logarithm to just say log. Finding a log means Finding an exponent. Okay, so when you're finding logarithms, you're finding exponents. Okay, so we need to remember this. We're going to say it about 20 times today. So here's our first time. We're going to say it out loud. This is going to be our chant. A log is an exponent. Ready? A log is an exponent. Okay, so turn to someone next to you and say it. A log is an exponent. Okay, turn to the other person on the other side. A log is an exponent. Okay, so let's go back over here. Look what happened. I said y equals a log. Okay, if a log is an exponent, then that tells me y is the exponent. The base on the, ex on the log notation is the base in your exponent. And then the only other place for this x to go is over here. x becomes the, you kind of think of it as the answer. So, y equals log base b of x means x equals b to the y. We're going to write some fact families. Okay, and I'm comfortable with the fact that it feels really uncomfortable to you right now. It'll get better as the morning goes by. So here we go. Logarithm equation. Here's the log equation. What I want us to do is write the exponent equation that goes with it. Okay, so here we're going to start with the base. What is the base? 3. A log is an exponent. So what is the exponent here? 2. See the idea? A log is an exponent. So if I say log base 3 of 9, the log is, the e the log is 2. Okay, and then... This number goes here. This number is called the argument of the log. Now, before you do the next one, I want us to read both of these together. So here we go. Log base 3 of 9 equals 2. Okay, that wasn't even a third of you. So let's do this again. Ready? Log base 3 of 9 equals 2. That means 3 to the second power equals 9. Okay? Those two facts are interchangeable. Alright, here's the next one. 
log base 4 of a 16 equals negative 2. Start with the base. What's your base? 4. What's your exponent? Negative 2, because a log is an exponent. Okay, so then the argument ends up being the answer. 4 to the negative 2 is a 16. Does that make sense? Does that look like something you remember? Okay, all right, next one. Read this one out loud with me. Log base 8 of 2 equals one third. Okay, what's your base? What's your exponent? All right, you can do it. And then the answer is 2. Do you see the idea? Okay, now, I gave you a to-do problem. So the next, there are three, A, B, C. See what you can do. Take, it's written in log form. See if you can write the exponent underneath it. You do it by yourself or with your neighbor. Alright, let's try it. What was your base? Seven. What was your exponent? Two. And what did you get as your answer? Forty-nine. Great. Okay. B. What's your base? Eight. What's your exponent? Eight one. What do you get as your answer? Eight. Cool. Now, do you believe both of those? Yes. This makes sense. This makes sense. Cool. All right. We get B. Ooh, tricky one. What's your base? Three. What's your exponent? One half. What's your answer? Three. Okay. So that. To know that this is true, we need to believe and remember how the fractional exponents work. Okay, excellent. Now, let's go, woo, tricky, let's go the other direction, all right? I'm giving you to you in exponent form, so I'll do the first one with you. I want to write it in log form, so I'm going to write the word log. Now, what's the base? Three. See, the base three. on your exponent is 3. Put the 3 down lower. It looks like a subscript, so it's tinier and it's down below the log. Ooh, interesting. What's the, what's going to go here is my argument? 81. 81 because a log is an exponent. So where does the exponent have to go? The 4 has to go over here. Do you see the idea? Okay. All right. You try the next two. Sorry, this is kind of the low part of the video. <laughs> Take my students working. Okay, here we go. Log base what? Two. Two of one eight, one eight equals negative three. Perfect. All right. Log base <laughs> Of how about Q root of seven equals all right, excellent. Now I would put a little word no next to these. These would make great three by five card examples. Where on one side you have the exponent form and on the other side you have the log form. And you want to be able to go back and forth. You could start with either side and you want to be able to do the other side. Okay? Alright. Now here's the key to the whole thing. A log is an exponent. So when we're solving this, we're going to think, to what power does the base have to be raised to get the argument? Okay, but before we do that, we need to say this a couple more times. So, everybody look up here. All right. So what you going to do, we're just going to say it with the regular voice first. Ready? A log is an exponent. One more time. A log is an exponent. All right, now I want you to say it again. I want you to vibrate the word log. You're going to go, a log is an exponent. Like you really believe this. It's really important. Ready? Here we go. A log is an exponent. All right, now I want you to shut your eyes. You're going to put your hands like this. You're going to turn around a mountain. All right, we do this every semester. We're not doing this just because we're video. Ready? We're doing it even though we're video. Everybody, come on. Shut your eyes. Say it really quietly. A log is an exponent. Say it again real quietly. A log is an exponent. 
Okay, open your eyes and say it really loud so the people around you can hear. Ready? A log is an exponent. Okay, so what is a log? An exponent. Okay, so your job is to say this like six times a day. Well, 50 times a day. You carry around a little three by five card that says a log is an exponent. When you're brushing your teeth, when you're going to bed at night, a log is an exponent. So if I'm finding a log, what am I finding? An exponent. Okay, that's the key to the whole thing. So here we go. I want to use the definition of a log, meaning that I know it's an exponent. So here's what I'm thinking in my head. If I want to find a log, I'm finding a what? Exponent. exponent. So log means 3 of 9. Here's what I'm thinking. 3 to what power gives me 9? Two. Ooh, 2. That's your answer. There's nothing else to write. You're just writing the exponent. 